gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. <coughs> then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Don't those five confirmation students look great this morning? They opted this year to dress nice instead of wearing robes, and you all came through our request. But you know, right now I know what they're sitting up here thinking. I can read your minds. I know that you're all thinking, no more confirmation assignments with Pastor Dean. We're free. <laughs> you're also thinking, no more point accumulations with Pastor Lori or Linda Osterhaus. We're free. No more tests. No more worship note-taking. No more sleeping in cardboard boxes on the lawn in a freezing cold of October. No more putting chicken feet in our mouths or holding live crickets in our mouth as we run across the living room floor. I know what Olivia is thinking right now. She's thinking, I will never have to drink a blended McDonald's Happy Meal sh again. I'm free. Olivia won the contest last year at, at retreat. Con one of the games was the first person to eat a Happy Meal from McDonald's was the winner. The thing they didn't know was that the Happy Meal would be blended all together in a blender and served in liquid form. <laughs> Aiden, I know what you're thinking, and you're going to hate me when I share what's on your mind. Aiden is thinking, I will never again have to ride in the back of a van on a confirmation trip and puke all over my pants. <laughs> I'm free. But it was a fun morning, and all of those people in Whitewater enjoyed it as well. Carrie. Yeah, I know Carrie's thinking, no one's going to make me spell Habakkuk. Again, <laughs> I'm free. And Nicholas, of course, is giving thanks right now because he will not have to go swimming in the frigid waters of Lake Superior on a confirmation with Pastor Lor on a confirmation work trip with Pastor Lori ever again. He is free. And John, who is sitting there just sighing with great relief because he won't have to put on one of those white robes like acolyte hunters wearing, an acolyte, and stand up here and face the congregation and sing the hymns. He loves doing that, don't you? He's free. Heck, even the gospel today announces it. You're free. Now, there's something I always like to wait until Confirmation Sunday to tell you. It's a little secret, I know. And now I'm going to share it with you. You have always been free. You have never been required to do any work or to attend class or to go on retreats or to go to mission projects or even to take worship notes. No. Your freedom from all of that stuff happened 2,000 years ago, and you weren't even here. Your freedom was won way back when God decided to send a savior to the earth to take away the power of sin that could control your lives and all of the rest of our lives. God made you free. Because of the gift of Jesus Christ, 
the author of Romans, which Chris just read, says today that there are no longer distinctions between people. In another place in the, in the, in the letters, that same author says, there is no longer a distinction of whether you're black or white, or male or female, or I would add, for Olivia's sake, blonde or brunette, because we are all one. We have all sinned and fallen short of what God expected of us. But we have all been made whole, and we've all been freed from that sin by God's forgiving grace made visible to us through Jesus Christ. So you five confirmation students, your thoughts are true this morning. You are free. But you have been free every day of your life. God has loved you since the day you were conceived in your mother's womb. You can never be free because of something that you accomplish in your life. You can never be free because you're able to abide by those 613 laws found in the book of Leviticus that a lot of you are breaking right now because you've got a piece of clothing on that has two kinds of material in it. You're never going to be free because you've been able to write and spell correctly in order the books of the Torah, you are only free because God has freed you and made you God's own. But with this life of freedom comes a life of responsibility. Being free, being made free, doesn't signify an ending. It doesn't mean guys, that you've reached the pinnacle of your faith journey. You will only reach that. You will only reach the climax of your faith journey when you can no longer breathe or walk on the earth. That means you'd be dead. Today, the outcome of your freedom just gets more pronounced. When we trust that God has freed us from sin, we are free, indeed, we are free to be the kind, caring, compassionate, hospitable, open-minded, loving, forgiving, welcoming, sharing people that God would like us to be. And you become this type of person because you're free. We live a lifestyle not to become free, but because we know that we are already so, guys in the front row, including you, Linda, no one will make you come to confirmation class anymore. <clears throat> Although if you want to find stuff in and see me or try a test along with the rest of the group, you're welcome. But no one will make you come, and you may find relief in that. After all, you know what that means. You can now come to church at 5 o'clock on Saturday and sleep in on Sunday. Yeah. But I also want you to realize that now you begin to start making the big decisions. In a few minutes, I'm going to call you forward, and you're going to stand right up here in the center, and you're going to turn out there and face everybody in the congregation, and you're going to tell them that you intend to continue to live in the covenant that God made with you when you were baptized. You will say in a few minutes that you intend to live amongst God's faithful people. And because you are free, you get to decide what it means for you to live among God's faithful people. In a few minutes, you're going to stand in front of this congregation, and you're going to say that you intend to proclaim the good news of God through your words and your deeds. Because you're free, you get to decide how the words that you use at school or at work, or the words that you use to your parents or your grandparents or your siblings, or the words that you use at the ballpark or over at the mall, how those words reflect God. Because you are free, you get to decide how the things that you do and the actions that you take let other people know that God loves you and if you want other people to know that God loves them as well. So I've got an example for you. 
The next time that you are tempted to flip somebody off, you all know that what that is, right? I figured you did because I've seen you do it to me numerous times. <laughs> Under the table. The next time that you are tempted to flip somebody off, just stop for a minute to remember you are free. How does flipping someone off let that person know that God has freed you? In a few minutes, you are going to say that you intend to serve all people. The words don't say some people. All. To serve all people just as Christ served. You're going to announce in this room that you promise to strive for justice and peace in all of the earth. And because you are free, you get to decide how you will make that happen. So I ask you, what hard decisions will you have to make in the upcoming days and weeks and years of your life to assure that the plate that the earth is indeed a just place for all? Remember, you don't get to set anybody outside of that boundary. Your covenantal promise today is justice for all. Now you are going to do one more thing this morning. The final thing that you're going to promise is that you realize that the only way you can meet those responsibilities, and they're not easy, but the only way that you can meet them is to ask God to help and God. Like every other person in this room, you guys will make some mistakes. And you will discover that some decisions that you have made or that you're going to make are not going to be your best decisions. But you will know that God's loving forgiveness knows no bounds because you are free. And that freedom allows you to make a mistake and trust that God still loves you. I want you to, I know you don't love to sin, but John, John, did you want to solo this thing? <laughs> but I do want you to sing and follow along and pay attention to the words to the hymn that we're going to sing. I picked that hymn for the words. As you live, a life of freedom and responsibility. And as you go forward from this place today as very fine adults, and you are very fine young adults, and as you continue your life in the faith community, and as you make difficult decisions for peace and justice in the world, reflect on the words of this hymn. They're powerful words, particularly the refrain, which remember we don't sing after verse 1. The words of the refrain. Do not be afraid. I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you. And you are my friend. Celebrate your freedom. Amen. The congregation may be seated, and I invite you five to lay your bulletins down and come forward. So everybody knows, from the right is Olivia Knudsen, Carrie Seeliger, John Olson, Nicholas Stam, and Aidan Dalton. Let us begin with the prayer. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new life. We ask this in the name of the Christ. Amen. Before we ask them several questions and profess their faith, one of the things that they're going to talk about this morning is their promise to work for peace and justice in the world. And I would be happy to announce right now, before we get to that point, that all five of these individuals <coughs> have signed up to join us for the summer trip that will be next summer to New York, where one of our tasks will be
to take meals on foot from a kitchen and deliver them at homes of people who are dying of terminal illnesses, primarily of AIDS and cancer. And so I, I want to lift up that their promise for just the work, the work of justice, you have already signed on to the first part of that. As all of you did this last summer when you worked in Duluth very hard, except for Olivia, who was out of dosing. <laughs> I know you all worked. A few questions. I want you to profess your faith in I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus. <coughs> Reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Confirmation students. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, answer together, I renounce them. Do you renounce the devil and are, do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, answer together, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that might draw you away from God? If so, answer together, I renounce them. I now ask you to profess your faith by speaking the words of the Apostles' Creed together. I believe. You know, right now they're all saying, we're free. <laughs> You've been sweating that all morning, haven't you? <laughs> you did wonderfully. You have made public profession of your faith. Now I ask you, do you intend to continue in the covenant that God made with you in holy baptism, which is to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and to share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ Jesus through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If that is the covenant answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People who have gathered in this room, do you promise to support these young men and women and pray for them in their life in Christ? If so, answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and ask God to help and guide us. I would invite you five to come out and take a position at the communion room. I would invite their families to join them, Linda and Pastor Lloyd. Families may come forward. I invite you all to lay hands on Nicholas. Stir up in Nicholas the gift of your Holy Spirit, the wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. You may rise. You're free. <laughs> Hate it. I invite you to lay hands. I hate it. Stir up in Aden the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in John the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Congratulations. 
Jesus. Like to lay hands on Harry. They're related. <laughs> Stir up and carry the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Stir up in Olivia the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. We rejoice with our brothers and sisters here in the life of baptism. Together we give thanks and praise to God, and we continue to play, proclaim the good news of the gospel to all the world. You may um, congratulate them with your applause. Thank you. 